Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have something that I basically never do on this channel and that is recreate a character. I, like so many other people, was extremely excited for the Final Fantasy VII remake because Final Fantasy was a huge part of my childhood. And to be honest, like they need to remake more. <laughs> like get on six, get on eight, get on nine. Really get on six is what I really want them to do because that game is so good, but it's so dated. I knew that I wanted to recreate at least one of these characters into a doll. So when I thought about it, the character that I was probably the most aesthetically drawn to is Sephiroth. Why Sephiroth, you may ask? Well, because he's a big, beautiful hunk of Bishonen man. Picking a base for this doll was actually like really annoying because I bought a head and a body off of AliExpress and the head came in a timely manner. It came from a different seller, but the body took four months to get to me. And I just assumed by like the third month that it was just lost in the mail and never showing up. Um, and it actually showed up right when I finished this doll, which is really unfortunate because that body would have been a more appropriate choice for this doll. But I mean, like, whatever. I mean, what are you going to do? So I picked up another doll and that doll was BTS's J-Hope. I picked this doll because of his pale complexion, his kind of like longer face, his smiling face mold, and he's also like very articulated. Also these dolls are like 5 to $10 on Amazon at the moment, so if you're like thinking about buying one, they're really good bases and they're super cheap right now. We start with the basics of doll customizing, so I cut all his hair off and then I put his head in hot water, then I pop his head off, then I go in through the neck hole with a screwdriver and scrape around to loosen up all the hair plugs, then I get all the hair plugs out with needle nose pliers through the neck hole. I use acetone nail polish remover to get the paint off and normally the paint comes off really easily but for some reason with this doll like I just had to like scrub the face to get all the paint off. I ended up using q-tips and for some reason that worked way better than the cotton rounds that I was using but yeah it just took me like 10 minutes to get all this paint off. I don't know why it was such a nightmare. I wanted to compare the face molds now that I had the paint off of the BTS one just to make sure that I wanted to go with the BTS doll and I decided to go with that one because the other one is a really cool face mold but it has no nostrils <laughs> so I was like Ugh. I decided my man's needed nostrils he couldn't be walking around with no nostrils. I decided to extend this doll's hairline up a bit because Sephiroth has a really intense widow's peak so I just I mean he couldn't not have one so I had to give him one. I paint the scalp gray because I'm going to be rerouting the hair. If you guys don't know, you paint the scalp because it just makes it so that if there's any gaps in the reroute, it doesn't really show through. It makes the hair look thicker. So you guys might be wondering how we're going to extend up the hairline. How we're going to do that is we're going to take a popsy. A popsy? Who is she? Epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is a two-part sculpting medium. And I'm just taking this and I'm like shoving it into the reroot holes. I'm not using a ton of it because epoxy sculpt and vinyl just don't mix very well. It kind of like pops off the vinyl if you're a little bit too rough with the vinyl. And since it's going to be re rerouting, that's going to happen. So I'm just shoving it into the holes. I'm using the Doll Planet's Thumper Nylon Doll Hair. And I'm just looping that around my reroot tool and plunging it into the head. I set the hair in place with Fabri-Tac glue, squeezing it through the neck hole. And fun fact, I hate Fabri-Tac glue, like I just hate it. So I decided to try using Elmer's glue all with this doll. I squeezed some of that in through the head and uh, don't do that. <laughs> so it got really, really hard in there and I almost ruined the face up trying to get the head back on. I sand down the epoxy a little bit and then I go over it with acrylic paint that I mixed together in a flesh tone. And here he is. Was it worth it? Probably not, but you know, I think he looks a little bit more separathy. I spray the doll three times, Mr. Super Clear, and then I get into the face up. Painting this doll was a little bit weird for me um, because I had to, I mean, it's a portrait doll, so I had to make him look like Sephiroth. I couldn't just, you know, 
paint him in my style. I guess I could, but that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to make it look recognizably like Sephiroth. Um, and I looked at tons of different photos of him for reference, but I mainly looked at these three. I feel like after looking at way too many pictures of his face, I sort of noticed a couple recognizable traits. One of those was that his face is almost like gray toned. It's like very, very cool toned in a lot of different shots. He sort of looks sickly. Um, and also his nose is super, super defined. So I almost had to contour the nose on this doll to like an uncomfortable level because I didn't, I wasn't really aware of this, but this doll's nose is not bony at all. Like it doesn't have a whole lot of form to it. Um, so I just had to contour, I had to contour it a lot. Like to the point where I was like, does this look bad? Maybe it looks bad. <laughs> His lips are like basically taupe colored and I did not have that color pastel. So I had to mix together like pink, gray, purple to get the right sort of shade for his lip color. The eyes on this doll I mean, they're the tiniest eyes I've ever painted. <laughs> they're just like really small. These BTS dolls have similar proportions to Barbie dolls where, um, I mean, they have like pretty tiny heads. So the eyes were like super, super tiny. Also, Sephiroth has kind of tinier eyes to begin with. So I had to make like really tiny eyes. I think when it comes to like, if you're used to painting Monster High and Ever After High dolls and then you paint a Barbie, my biggest like sort of tip would be is to not, not try to over detail the eyes. I was like having trouble where I was like, oh, I wanna get all the details I always get with my other dolls and this doll. And it's just like my paintbrush was just not tiny enough. Like it just was not working. <laughs> I think sometimes less is more because it's just real easy to make an area on these tiny, tiny, tiny faces look really busy. None of the art that I looked at, you couldn't really see his veins or anything, but I like veins, so I gave him veins, okay? I'm not gonna not paint veins, I want veins. So I added little branch-like pencil marks around his eyes and his forehead with a light blue pencil. Obviously, you can see that. By the way, has anybody been playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake? If you have, do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know down below. Sephiroth's eye color is always a bright green, although sometimes it fluctuates and it's like a more of a tealy, minty bright green, and then sometimes it's just like kind of a straight up bright green. Um, I decided to go in with one of my lightest greens that I have, and that's a mint colored green pencil for his eyes. Another trait that I noticed while looking at way too many pictures of Sephiroth's face is that his eyebrows are very close to his eyes. I'm assuming that's because it gives him a more intimidating look. Um, yeah, I probably should have actually brought them a little lower.
Another pretty distinguishing trait is that he has snake eyes. So I drew on little lines on the middle of his eyes to act as like the snake eye slits. One of the biggest areas I had to hold myself back in with this repaint was his eyelashes. I just, I love painting tons of eyelashes and I just could not do that with this repaint. Um, because generally with like men's faces, if you want to make them look more manly, I guess, they don't have like tons of eyelashes, even though I think I gave him maybe too many on this face. But I just, I just couldn't help myself, okay? I really want to do another repaint. This is actually, by the way, my first repaint on this channel that's a man. Hey, um, I've only repainted one other male doll and I really want to repaint another male doll and kind of just make it as beautiful as I want it to be. I really love beautiful men in art. Um, it's funny because it's not really something that I'm like attracted to in real life, but beautiful men in art, like I love it. Like for, speaking of Final Fantasy, Yoshitaka Amano, his art, the men, so beautiful. Um, and I just want to make like a beautiful man for my next male repaint. With Vallejo's gloss varnish, I apply some gloss to his lips. Now for the clothes. So for this jacket, I actually used a modified version of DG Requiem's leather jacket for boys pattern, which I'll link down below if you guys want to check it out. I then made Sephiroth's belt corset girdle genuinely like don't know what this thing is, but I hemmed it at the top, the bottom and the sides, and then I sewed it together at the middle. Now onto the pants. So I deconstructed the pants that he came with to get the pattern. These are like each one of the leg of the pants, just so you know what you're looking at. I hemmed the top and the bottom of the pants and then I basically sewed them good side to good side to form sort of a tube shape, flipped them and then sewed them together at the crotch. For the X on Sephiroth's chest that attaches to his like belt girdle thing and then also the belt on his trench coat, I sewed strips of fabric together. For his long ass sword, the Mass Immune, I am using Warbla. So I cut two pieces of Warbla for each part of the sword and then I heat them up with my hair dryer and stick each piece together basically. So like they're a thicker piece of Warbla.
I guess I lost footage of me attaching the handle to the sword or the handle to the blade, but um, I did that as well. And then I colored the, or I painted the sword with acrylic paint. I went over top of the silver, like opaque silver paint with a metallic silver paint. And then I went on top of that with a glossy varnish. There seemed to be a couple different versions of the Mass Immune. I think the one that I was looking at had fabric wrapped around the handle. So I took that pleather fabric that I've been using like a strip of it and I wrapped it around the handle and I glued it in place with hot glue. This is the outcome. <laughs> she a little crooked, but she okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about this stupid belt that Sephiroth has on. Um, I tried to make this out of foam, plastic packaging, clay, and epoxy sculpt, and it just looked terrible each time I did it. Uh, so I just opted out of it because I was just like, I just can't make this look good. Um, so I made the like chest thing in the original version of Sephiroth. He has like a, this thing on his girdle. So I made that, I painted it with, uh, I made it out of foam and I painted it with acrylic paint and then I hot glued it onto his girdle. Guess what, you guys? I actually made shoes. If you've been around this channel, you know, like, I just don't even want any parts of making shoes, but I made shoes, or I made boots, rather. Um, so I cut out a pattern for the boots, um, just kind of by eyeballing it, and then I hemmed it at the top. I then wrapped it around his leg and sewed it good side to good side up his leg. To get a sole for the shoe, I traced his foot onto foam and then I hot glued that foam shape onto the base of the boot. I painted the sole of the shoe black and then there was like a little gap between the sole of the shoe and then like where the leather or pleather boot meets. So I took some string and I hot glued that in place and then I went over it with black paint as well. This is actually a really easy way to make boots. So if you guys are, you know, you wanna make some super easy shoes, this is pretty easy. I blush his body with the same color pastels that I used on his face. I sort of decided, like basically when I was towards the end of this that I hated the BTS hand mold. It just looks so stiff. Um, which is unfortunate because there are ways that you can change hand molds. Uh, Hexian actually changed the hand mold on his doll in his Kim Kardashian video and it like worked so well and I really want to try it. But I painted his hands black 
um, with acrylic paint because Sephiroth has gloves on. And then I cut a huge chunk of his hair off because he had just like way too much hair. And Sephiroth's hair is actually shorter in the front than it is in the back. So I am cutting that shorter in that area. I decided that um, his trench coat was just like really boring. <laughs> so also, I don't know why I didn't do this in the beginning, but he has a bunch of like belts and like loops or whatever on his trench coat. So I made those, I made the belt loops with wire. I just like bent them and then I sewed the uh, belt loops to strips of tiny little strips of leather. That's kind of cute, isn't it? And I sewed like a million of them to his jacket. I also painted the zipper onto his jacket with metallic silver paint. Something that sort of bummed me out with this doll is that he is the first doll that I've ever sewn into clothing. Um, I kind of like like making all my dolls have removable clothing because it just feels better, you know? Like being able to remove whatever I want to remove. But realistically, this is a certain character, so he's not going to be like wearing a different outfit. That would be really weird. Um, but if I do have to remove his outfit, it's kind of easy. Like I just have to snip certain threads and it comes off pretty easy, but I was disappointed in myself. I'm kind of happy with how the trench coat came out though, because even though like it looks a little janky, um, I had the lowest of expectations for me making a trench coat because I've just never made something like that before or sewed something like that, but I dig it. I decided his widow's peak needed to be a bit more defined, so I went in with pencil and paint and I just basically sketched in his hairline. For the wristbands and the leg bands around his, I mean obviously his legs and his wrists, I painted those black, they're made out of foam, and then I went over top of it with metallic silver paint. Once I was done painting it metallic silver, I used this iridescent medium by Winsor Newton that I've had since college that still works pretty good. And it's really pretty. It's just shiny. I like it. It's like a, it's like a varnish but with sparkles. I hot glued each one of the bands in place. For Sephiroth's really intense, like, bang curl that he has going on i heated up a chopstick and i just curled the front around it i wish i could have gotten a more intense effect i just think i kind of missed the mark with his hair but i tried i don't know i couldn't get it to curl anymore i also smoothed down his hair a little bit with some pomade okay so let's talk about his armor and how like frustrating it was for me so I made it once before and it just looked really bad um, so I decided to remake it when I remade it I made it with more layers of the foam that I have um, so that it just makes him look a little bit bulkier which I think lends to Sephiroth's kind of like he's a very like sort of looming tall big presence that I just don't think I was getting before with the other armor Once the armor was super glued in place, I went over a flame with it. So this is foam and foam, if you bend it in a certain way and you go over a flame, it just basically like it stays in that position. But if you get it too close to the flame, it'll start melting. So just a heads up. I painted all of the pieces black first and then I went over top of them with metallic silver paint. I know that Sephiroth's armor is a very very light gray i tried to do this at first with the other armor and it looked really really bad i just think that like it looked like foam armor whereas when you put the black down first it looks more like armor for some reason so i opted to do this just because it just looked so bad as the lighter gray color i then went over top of it with that iridescent medium With hot glue, I hot glued the armor in place.
once you glue the armor on, he's actually done. And is he perfect? No, but I like him regardless. Like, honestly, I just didn't really know how this project would go because it's very different than what I'm attracted to with dolls. I feel like with dolls, I'm very attracted to like super girly, sort of like pink pastel things. Um, and this is so far removed from that, but I still really like how he turned out. Do you guys have a favorite Final Fantasy? I think my favorite is actually 10. Um, I just really, really, really like 10. I haven't played the newer Final Fantasy games just because like I didn't keep up with the consoles. I don't know. I got busy. Okay. Adulthood happened. <laughs> um, but if you guys have a favorite Final Fantasy game, let me know what that is down below. I was thinking of making a Cloud doll or an Eris doll, or maybe I'll make a Final Fantasy 10 doll. I don't know. If you guys would be interested in seeing that, let me know. Um, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe. It makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye.